This is Wickham Sound. Hello everybody, you're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I am your host, Dane Cobain. This is the weekly radio show where we chat about local arts news. We have a different guest each week. We head over to the Rye Light Zone for a short story and or some poetry. We play some local and or independent and unsigned artists. And we have an album review from Twanglin' Jack Ford at the end of the show. As always, you can find us on Facebook if you search for The Art Show on Wickham Sound. You can also listen on Catch Up on iTunes, Spotify, all of that good stuff. We're repeated here on Wickham Sound on Monday nights. And if you want to get in touch with me here at the studio, you can email dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk. That's D A N E dot C O B A I N at wickhamsound.org.uk. And I particularly want to hear from artists, creatives, performers, and the like, especially if you've got MP3s I can share on the show. We're going to go straight into the Rye Light Zone, which is our weekly foray into some sort of poetry and or music. And this is something that Twanglin' Jack Ford, my album reviewer, sent over to me. And I can't for the life of me remember what it's called. And it's going to bug me, so I'm going to have to look it up. So bear with me. This is the magic of uh, pre-editing these shows. So this is some spoken word by uh, Twanglin' Jack Ford. This is desensitised to the nth degree. It was not my fault. I was a big baby, over 10 pounds, too big for the door. I entered the world like a famous Roman emperor. Too big for the door might be what happens when I die. My gran owned a sweet shop in Stanmore Village. Those were different times, everyone knew everyone. I would be sent on errands to the neighbouring shops. I was a local character. I had survived falling on an electric fire in the shop, burning my right hand. I had no memory of that. It would not affect me until I needed to stretch an octave on the piano or finger pick on the guitar. I must have been only four, sent to the chemist a few doors away. Something was said in that chemist in the early 1960s. I don't remember the comment, but I do know that it was the point when I started being asked what had ever happened to that nice little boy I used to be. The sliding doors moment, the point at which it was determined I would not be a titan of commerce, but a fat songwriter. Hey, judgmental chemist customer, I could have been a fridge magnate. Mind your own business. I did not know I was fat. No one had prepared me. No one told me I was fat till my first day at school. Somehow the other kids all knew what fat was, and that was me, Fatty Ford, Fatso Ford. I saw no rhyme nor reason for such a cruel alliteration. I went on my first diet in infant school. Where was the obesity crisis when I needed it? I was painfully shy with strangers, but amongst my peers I was the one with the ideas. I was much more like just William than all the fat kids on the telly at the time. How I hated Billy Bunter. I went to a boys grammar school, even though I could not spell. The grammar school seemed not to care. It was the 60s, and what I lost in accuracy I made up for in content. But the outside world judges you thick. My eye is never drawn to the top left of the page, nor to the start of a sentence, and often I write words starting in the middle. People said I should read more, in the same way they said I should eat less. I loved learning speeches from Shakespeare, excited by reciting, I declaimed to retain, enjoying the feeling of the words in my mouth. If all the world's a stage, I would be a clown. Everyone looks fat in a clown suit. I liked English and history, but because I could not spell, I opted for sciences. We all had an interview with the headmaster. My studies must have been going quite well, because the headmaster just told me I should lose weight. I went to work in a bank, where it's all numbers. My father helped me buy a suit. I never suited suits. My father described my look as sartorial elephants. On the whole, there is a much higher rate of fatness in the adult world. I had an A-level in economics, so I actually felt confident. I enjoyed the work and the company, but I didn't make it to the end of my probation period. I was told I had a solemn and morose disposition and would put the customers off. I got a job in another bank and accidentally got demoted. It must have been my constant feeling of inferiority showing. Or the lunchtime drinking. Reverend Spooner would have described me as a weary banker. 
From then on, I would stick to driving. I later got a judgmental wife who judged me unmanly. A failed sperm test supported her argument. Perhaps I would have been more accepting of myself if I had been diagnosed or relabeled dyslexic or non-binary. But people would have still thought my problem was that I ate all the pies. Anyway, I should not need a diagnosis to be allowed to be what I am. And at least I didn't have an incurable illness. Or so I thought. A famous rock star said it was having a big nose that made him turn to music. I tried drums, but my dad said I could not tell a bar of 6-8 from a bar of soap. I tried guitar and I was told that would be okay as long as I didn't try to sing, seeing as I couldn't carry a tune in a wheelbarrow. I formed a band and wrote songs that were judged to be misspelt, even though they sounded just as sweet. My father was a musician. He played in brass bands with my brother. Whenever one of his bandmates met me, the unmentioned son, they would ask if I was musical. My father would reply, no, he plays the guitar. I liked that joke. It was a routine I would have been happy to perform more often. I liked that I could be the butt of a different kind of joke. And a big butt at that. The band had a big PA that I could hide behind, up until I heard some applause. Then I would take centre stage. I was the only one in the band that could drive, and I was the only one that never had a girlfriend, and I'd only started a band to get a girlfriend. So I would do the takedown and pack the van. I would drop everyone off all over London. But what can a fat boy do at playing a rock and roll band in sleepy London town? After the band, I set up a home studio where I worked on improbable projects for dodgy chances with a songwriter I had met and the roadie from the band, who had always been the best musician, but too unreliable to trust to play on stage. We met up after lunch every day, so I spent the morning cycling a regular 20-mile route. I followed an unsustainable, low-calorie, high-nicotine diet that made me permanently light-headed. They said I was no longer fat, just large. In pictures from the time, I looked like someone else. But in my head, I was still the fat guy, hiding his girth in plain sight, holding it in for the camera. And that is when the neurosis starts. I describe it as the fear of falling into a vat of chocolate. The Battle of the Bulge is always a war. It never ends on a ladder, always on a snake. One day I got ill and failed a thyroid test, but scored very highly in a test for the antibodies that were trying to kill me. An illness much more common in women, my mother and aunt were both sufferers, but I was just so pleased to know it wasn't my fault. I took the medication, lost some weight and saw a dietitian. She made me lose some more weight and then told me to stop because I would never be thin and I would just make myself ill trying. Then I realised I was really not quite right in the head. I would go days without sleep. They gave me tranquilizers, which gave me a brief glimpse of a memory of how it used to be to be me. My boss, with perfect timing, once told me and everyone within earshot that if there was one thing guaranteed to make him want to go to sleep, it would be listening to me talk about my insomnia. You gotta laugh, ain't you? All I wanted was sleeping pills, but the doctor referred me to the local mental health unit. Phones make me anxious, but high anxiety was mental health phone interviews. My amygdala has a mind of its own and my fight and flight response doesn't know if it's coming or going. I wasn't sure how I felt about seeing a psychotherapist. I told him I'd take a placebo if I thought it would do me any good. I wouldn't take happy pills though. I still want to play the blues. He asked me what I ultimately hoped to gain from overcoming my anxiety and I said it was to perform my own song solo. But I later found out that that was the only therapy I needed. Catharsis and revenge. My hypothyroidism has caused me to develop skin problems. But I enjoy keeping the sun away. The hats and gloves are a distraction. I get comments, but not about my weight. And I've written a funny song about it. I forced myself to watch the documentary that Jesse Nelson of Little Mix made about her struggle to cope with all the negative comments about her weight. I thought it would just be a celeb whinge fest. I was wrong. I thought if only she had had my coping mechanisms. 
because I coped so well. I'm old school, mustn't grumble, sticks and stones, laughter is the best medicine. But what about all the times I did not do something because I was too shy to ask? The things I did not offer to do because I felt I was not up to the job, only to see someone else do it much worse than I would have. To live a life never feeling good enough, and always either giving up or overcompensating. To feel the need to write stuff like this. I can't just be me. I have to be more than that. You can call me fat. The world does not need to have to learn yet another euphemism. If as a witness you are asked to describe the victim, just say he's fat. I am now almost fully desensitised. All right, thank you Twanglin Jack Ford for sending that in. That was desensitized to the nth degree as part of the Rye Light Zone. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM at Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and we're gonna have a little bit of music, and this is a track by Caitlin McAvoy, and then uh, we're gonna join Caitlin for a short interview. So, Caitlin McAvoy. <laughs>
you'll be able to watch TV on your microwave. 3D print yourself a personal butler. You rang mom? And get fit by just looking at a treadmill. OK, maybe not that. But wherever the technology does go, radio will go there too. Because Radio Player is working with the world's leading car and tech companies to keep radio out in front. Radio Player. In the car, in the home, in the future. Find out more at radioplayer.org. Someone in your supermarket who's pushed the same trolley or held the same basket is highly likely to have COVID-19. This is a national health emergency. Around one in three people have no symptoms and are spreading it without knowing. So try to limit how often you shop and try to go alone. Always cover your nose and mouth, keep a safe distance and use hand sanitizer regularly. Stop the spread. Stick to the rules. If you bend the rules, people will die. Stay home, protect the NHS, save lives. Hiya Bucks! That's not just me saying hello. Hiya Bucks is a magazine and website for Buckinghamshire. Exploring the county, seeing the sights, meeting the delightful people and keeping up to speed with what's going on. We support local artists and producers, visit tiny libraries, meet ballet dancing estate agents and give away bottles of gin. Can you bear not to join in? Follow Hiya Bucks on social media. For daily readings, go to hirebucks.com and look for the free Hire Bucks glossy magazine. All right, that was Caitlin McAvoy, and we're about to be joined by the woman herself. So over to Caitlin. The first question which I ask everybody is, what was the last book that you read and what did you think of it? Oh, gosh, I've not read properly for ages. So probably something like Macbeth doing GCSE. That's not a bad answer, though. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't hate it. But because I had to, it was so dragged out because of English GCSE, I ended up hating it by the end of it. So, yeah. I mean, how did you do that? Because like uh, we did, uh, I think we did Macbeth at school. I don't really remember. We definitely did Romeo and Juliet. But um, it, it was like a case of you'd go around the class and everybody would read a little bit at a time and stuff. And it's, it's just super annoying because it's like, well, I could just sit here and read it by myself in like a quarter of the time, you know? Yeah. I mean, we usually put characters like certain people in the class would have characters and they read the lines and then like the teacher would stop it every now and then and we'd have to annotate it. So our books were all coloured and you just couldn't yeah. see what the words actually were by the end of it. So it's fine. It's kind, of, it's kind of a shame because because I think as well, like a lot of people with, um, you know, with English at school and whatnot, it can put people off reading because because just because of the way it's taught and stuff like that and you know I think people start to associate reading with like hard work rather than for for enjoyment or whatever yeah definitely I've not properly read since GCSE it's awful but it just put me off and that's saying something considering I sung right yeah, but... yeah. <laughs> well. well you're off to uh you're off to university soon as well right yeah yeah and I move out in August so not too long then no, it was literally like two months. Scary. So uh, what, what are you studying and uh, what uni are you going to? So I'm going, it's quite a new uni that's been opened. It's called Wars Fair and it's in Brighton. Um, so the course is called Career Musician, but you get to like focus on specific subjects. So I'm probably going to focus on songwriting, but I'll probably do vocals and like events management producing on the side just a bit of everything hopefully <laughs> cool well it sounds like that would be a good one as well because you would you would think at least I mean I'm sure you will have some required reading or whatever because ev everybody does but you would think a lot of it's going to be required listening and they'll be like you know your homework this week or whatever is to go and listen to dark side of the moon or something <laughs> yeah that's literally what I've been doing like through lockdown in college we were we got to a point where we didn't know what to do for work so we'd be set like everyone send in an album that you like to the chat and then everyone can go and listen to all those albums so that's all my lockdown was was listening to new albums and stuff amazing so what were some of the albums that you suggested as as your ones so I started off with uh, Moon by the Island Gardens, I believe it's called, by Aeris Roves. Quite a small artist, but I've seen him live before and I was just like, wow, his voice is insane and it's just very clever. And then I started listening to a guy called Jack Garrett, who's quite upcoming now. And it's very experimental, but pop as well. 
So it's very, very cool. Awesome. And uh, I mean, what are some of the genres that you like to, you know, you like to work in? I pretty much do everything, but mainly like soul and pop are the kind of things I write. But I'm in an indie band at college. I'll sing rock, pop, soul, I don't know, everything. I think I'm doing some like folk kind of kind of music on Saturday as well. So <laughs> awesome. So how long, when did, like, when did you start singing? How long have you been singing for? I can't remember a time I haven't sung, but I took it more seriously from, like, year six-ish. But I didn't do it for GCSE. And then I went to look at the college I'm at now, and I was like, whoa, this sounds cool because it's just a performance course. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it wasn't very much performance in the end because of COVID, but I'm now going to uni to do it, and I've learned a lot in the past year or so yeah for sure well I mean it, it's quite interesting because I mean one of the questions I wanted to ask ask you and um I, I don't know if you thought about it but what what do you think events will look like post-covid do you think they're going to be different to before do you reckon we're going to kind of go back to to normal I don't know I feel like there'll be a lot of it will go back to normal but I feel like a lot of artists will do a lot more online as well because they've learned how much it can bring in especially if they arrange it themselves it brings in all the money to them rather than having to pay for a venue and things like that so I feel like there'll be more of that but I think people are all waiting to go back to gigs I know I am just to go and watch live music because it's just you can't beat it yeah for sure it's interesting you say that because yeah I guess they'd also save on things like travel costs as well and you know <laughs> even just the cost of hotels and things like that and and also that there's a guy I really like is a singer songwriter called Simon Joyner. Um, and he's like, I think he's probably about 50 odd now. And he's like a married guy with kids and stuff. And so for a while he's been doing tours, but he'll only really tour. He's from uh, Omaha in uh, the U S and so he'll only tour like during the week. So he can be back at the weekends with his family and stuff. And so I suppose that's again, another good side of things is that, you know, people be able to do more more online stuff. They'll be able to spend more time with their families as opposed to being on the road all the time. Yeah, definitely. Because it does, it costs a lot from what I've heard because you have to pay for like all the staff coming with you, the venues, the staff at the venues and then everyone else, just everyone helping out is so much. I was like, wow, never even thought of that. So it's definitely a lot cheaper and then all that money goes to you. Yeah. And obviously, so you said you're uh, you're heading off to university in Brighton. Um, I mean, was part of your decision there the fact that Brighton is quite a, you know, it's quite an exciting place, lots of events, lots of music going on? Yeah, so the first time I've ever been to Brighton was last September. And I saw a band called The Big Push. And I was like, they sound really good, then followed them. And the drummer followed me back on Instagram. And they're going on tour and they sold out quite a few of their shows. And I was like, oh, they're from Brighton. I think they went to one of the unis down there. And it's just because it's close to London as well, so, which is like where the main part of the industry is. So it's like not too far away from that side of things. But then it's by the seaside. It's just London on the sea, really. Yeah. So it's perfect. <laughs> cool. So in terms of your own uh, your own music, um, you've got you got a new single out, right? I have an EP. Um there's two originals on Spotify and like all the other platforms. And then on SoundCloud, there's a cover of Disturbia, but made chilled out. <laughs> but it's only on SoundCloud that you can get that bit. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So, yeah. uh, I mean, is that one of the things you like doing is sort of, if you are going to do a cover, do you like to try and rework it and make it your own and, you know, play with genre and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. I definitely find remaking it into a very chilled out vibe the easier way of doing it and then I just like I just like singing that kind of style so making a very upbeat song like Disturbia and making it chilled out was very like it was a bit of a challenge but I really enjoyed it and I like how it sounds now so cool, yeah. cool. so um what does like the the songwriting process look like for you I mean I guess you start do you write like lyrics and melody and then work with other people 
It depends on the day. Sometimes I come up with lyrics. I have tons and tons of notes on my phone of just lyrics that have nothing with them. Sometimes I'll just be sat at the piano and I'll come up with chords or a little melody thing and then I'll build lyrics off of that. Or sometimes if I'm on Logic, I'll just make a drum beat out of nowhere and then build from there. Or I'll send chords to a guitarist that I know and I'll be like, can you just do something with these? And then I'll build off of that. It really varies cool and so um do you want to give a shout out to your guitarist <laughs> so i have a guitarist who's on my ep called alex old no he's part of a band called under sky as well they're very good um and then the guitarist i'm playing with on saturday who's going to be doing some of our originals um he's called oscar he has an ep out as well on spotify um, so yeah they're both very very talented amazing and um yeah so i guess because by the time this goes out the uh, the gig will have already happened as well but um you know uh, it'd be good to let us know about a few of the acts that you've booked for that and what it's been like for you as well because you've pretty much sort of curated your own lineup and i guess this is good practice for you for when you go off to uni as well right yeah definitely so myself and oscar are going to be doing a little set of just like acoustic songs so first there's a guy called Joe Ryder he went to my secondary school he's just finishing year 11 now um he's I think he's a singer songwriter as well so he's just bringing him and his guitar I think he's bringing a little loop pedal so I don't know what he's doing with that but I'm sure it'll be very exciting and then Kamani Charles he's just a guitarist very very unique style but I love I could just sit there and listen to him playing for ages it's great and then Charlie McAvoy he's I've never met him before but I was recommended to speak to him about playing and I've he has a single out on Spotify called Second Guess I believe it sounds amazing so I'm very excited to hear him play live and then we have Off Party who are playing at Penfest this year um, so that will be very exciting as well to hear them playing live and doing an acoustic set because they're not very acoustic at all. So it's a bit of a change up for them, I think. You're listening to the Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain. I'm here in conversation with Caitlin McAvoy, and this is one of her tunes. This is called Beautiful.
Beautiful by Caitlin McAvoy. That was the name of the title, not a description. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and we're joined here by Caitlin McAvoy. So I'd actually, because I, I, I just assumed that Charlie McAvoy would have been related to you because of the surname. <laughs> no, I have no idea. It was really eerie because I think I followed him on Instagram just because of our surnames. And then, yeah, I followed him on Instagram just because of the surnames. And I was like, that's really odd because I don't know anyone with the same surname. And then I spoke to this Manhunt Records and they were like, oh, yeah, you can speak to Charlie. He'll probably want to play at the gig. And I was like, oh, OK. And he obviously said yes. And I was just like, it's very weird. But everyone's been asking, is he your brother or something? I was like, no, yeah. I've never met him. But I'm excited. It, it, it is strange as well because it's the spelling of it as well. Because normally, I, I mean, I've seen like McAvoy as a surname, but it's normally with an A as well. So it's weird that you're both with an E. <laughs> and the capital E. It's not even just yeah. little. It was, yeah, weird coincidence. But yeah it's some sort of sign that you should be you know you should be playing on the same bill i suppose <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely it's an odd one but i'm very excited about it cool and so obviously um this is kind of i guess the culmination of some of the work experience you've been doing at wickham art center and again you've kind of looked out really because of because of the timing with covid but we've just about been able to sort of just about get you in now as we're starting to kick things open again. And so, um, you know, the other week you uh, you hosted the open mic night. What yeah. was that? It was, I was terrified about it all day. And then I got there and everyone was so nice. Like before I went up on the stage to introduce everything and I got up and I was like, that was easier than I thought. And then I did my little set and loved it. I never like come off stage and think I've done a good set. I'm always like picking out faults and I was like, no that sounded good I'm happy with that that never happened so it was it was really really good and I really enjoyed it awesome well I mean I think you got one of the biggest rounds of applause of the night as well there's always you know he's got to be nice for you as, as a, you know a first timer there as well and to be sort of welcomed into that community I guess yeah it was so nice and everyone was so sweet as well I just loved it cool so we'll hope that some of those come along on Saturday as well then yeah definitely Cool. So, uh, oh, actually, I was going to ask about the open mic. Is Were there any particular performers there who stood out to you and whose stuff you really enjoyed? Jordana. Her voice is gorgeous. I loved it. And then there was a girl called Emma as well, who Bob knew, but I'm not sure. She, yeah, her voice was great as well. I was just like blown away by both of them. Stunning. Yeah. yeah she's great i only i only saw her the first time myself like probably since lockdown and covid and all of that stuff and she played i think um we had a we had an open mic at one of our earlier music in the gardens and she sang uh sang a few songs but in particular they did uh black velvet together and it was just like amazing because you had the great like just the right voice for it as well yeah i could imagine that actually that's a good song yeah. I, I suppose um because of obviously for the open mic as well, it was in the church space. Um, I mean, do you think like the, the acoustics of being in a church, did that help with like with your own performance, do you think? Yeah, a lot of my songs had like a lot of oohs and ahs. And because it's in that church space, it was ve very echoey, which suited the church vibe a lot. So, yeah, it definitely worked well. Cool. So um, just going back onto the subject of university, um, and you might not have thought about this, I don't know, but do you, do you have like a rough idea of what you hope to do after university and what sort of what you'd like to do for a living? It's good question. <laughs> um, obviously, like biggest goal dream would be singing, songwriting to an audience forever and ever. But you have a finger in all pies, as people say. So it's definitely going to be a lot of that. And I really like the producing side of things at the moment. So I'm definitely going to try and keep up with that. Um, yeah, definitely events management as well. After doing this gig, I want to keep doing that because yeah. I find it very interesting keeping up to date with everything. Well, I suppose it's ideal for, for, you, for you as well as like a, a fan of live music in general. You know, you're effectively... If you could do that for a living, that that wouldn't be too bad because you sort of get to curate lineups of bands that you want to go and see and then go and see them, you know, as part of your job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool. 
Um, so just a couple more questions just to end on really. Um, so one of them I wanted to ask, like, are you interested in any of the other arts or is it primarily music or? I did photography as a GCSE mm. and I loved it. I still have my camera that I take out if I go, I don't know, when it snows, I live next to the woods. So I'm always out taking pictures of everything. If I go on holiday, it's taken with me. Um, and I do, I doodle. I'm not very like, my mom was like, oh, you could become a like tattoo artist. I was like, I don't know if I'd want to go that far with it, but I do enjoy it every now and then. So, yeah. I, I think the thing with a ta being a tattoo artist as well is you can't really get away with it unless you yourself are covered in tattoos as well. So, yeah, do you want tattoos, but not quite to the extent of like a tattoo artist. Yeah, because yeah, you go in there and it's like full sleeves and like on the neck and <laughs> all down the legs. Yeah. They look cool, but I just, I don't think I could pull it off myself. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, have you ever thought of um, like music photography as well, or, you know, taking photo photographs at events? That was my initial plan. Um, I went to college. I When I went for like the open day at my college, I went to look at the photography side of things and ended up just going round to music because I was like, oh, I wonder if I could take photos around that end of the college. And then ended up finding the course I'm on now. But the, yeah, the original plan was to go and do music photography and go and do that because I went to a concert once and I just was watching the photographer running around the stage the whole time. I was like, that looks like so much fun. But yeah, it was just the change with it. But I do photography for some bands that I know recently. So I still keep up with that as well. Cool. Well, I think as you say as well, that whole sort of finger in many pies things, it helps if, you, you know, and another thing um, that, you know, hopefully we'll be, we'll be able to do some of this weekend during your show at the Art Centre is to, you know, get you familiar with sort of running sound and stuff like that. But if, if you've got, you know, a, a basic understanding of music photography, event organising sound, and you can perform, you know, you've you pretty much got it covered there. You can do a whole event yourself. Yeah, yeah, it would be good. And it does help a lot. I think big portfolio there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Cool. Um, so a bit of a, um, I guess, a broader question. You might you might want to think about this one. But um, what does, you know, what does music mean to you? And, and how has it, you know, influenced your life? It's quite a good question because it was one I kept getting asked that you, like for uni interviews yeah. uh, and pretty much my answer all the time was because I song write all of like my experiences and my opinions and stories in life go down into my song so it's my way of expressing myself because I'm not very good at talking to people and things like that um so I put it all into my songs and just it's like a, it's like therapy yeah. and you know, it's, it's yeah great and because it's an art form as well it's just you keep your creativity flowing and then you're getting everything off your chest I think it's great and you can hear everyone else's stories as well do you think it ever makes it more difficult for you to perform when your songs are you know personal to yourself and honest and you know as opposed to doing maybe a cover for example yeah massively I've never performed one of my originals and I plan to do two on this Saturday so I am terrified but I really like the idea of it as well because it's like that's my my words are in that and I'm finally like putting them out there a bit more yeah. so it's exciting but it's terrifying well I, I suppose as well with this idea of it being like a kind of therapy it's almost like taking ownership and taking control even if you're writing about something really bad that happened to you being yeah. able to press that and then to sing it in front of other people I think it kind of you know will help you to get through some of the tough times and help you again to take a bit of ownership over it yeah definitely because I started writing through lockdown yeah so it was like a lot of depressing music to begin with and then I started trying to make more of beat music but it definitely got all like my emotions out at the beginning of lockdown and I was like oh this is good I'm gonna keep this going <laughs> oh Cool. So um, just the last question to end on, really, and we've kind of covered a bit of it, but it's a, it's a two part. So what have you got planned next and where can people follow you to find out more? So obviously next will be uni and the uni I'm going to, they have a lot of good connections. They have some very 
good venues. They've got this out, um, pub called the Prince Albert and they have a seafront venue. So I'm going to be trying to perform there as much as possible because they are very, very nice venues um, and just songwriting tons and tons. And I have, so I have a Facebook page and an Instagram page with both just Caitlin McAvoy music, all one word. And then I have my Spotify, which is just my name, the same thing, which has, well, and all my music's on all platforms now, actually. So anywhere, really, <laughs> whatever you use, you can use that. And there's that cover as well on your SoundCloud as well. Yeah, there's quite a few covers on my SoundCloud, actually. There's, and a few different orig- original songs, which I haven't released on all platforms. There's just a few like sneaky peeks at other ones I've done. Cool. All right, thank you very much to Caitlin McAvoy for joining us. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM at Wickham Sound. And this is a track by the boys from Off Party, who are one of the acts that uh, they headlined the Music in the Garden event at Wickham Art Centre that Caitlin was kind enough to organise. be able to watch tv on your microwave 3d print yourself a personal butler you rang mom and get fit by just looking at a treadmill okay maybe not that but wherever the technology does go radio will go there too because radio player is working with the world's leading car and tech companies to keep radio out in front radio player in the car in the home in the future find out more at radioplayer.org Deadlines to meet, targets to reach, clients to see. You're busy, and the last thing you need is to be thinking about your business IT. Take the headache out of it with CST. We offer the best possible technical support service and can tailor-make solutions for your infrastructure, whatever your requirements. Outsourcing your IT is cost-effective, and with CST, you'll have total support. For more information, visit cstlimited.com. CST. As IT should be. Someone on your street, at your supermarket, or in your park is highly likely to have COVID-19. This is a national health emergency. Around one in three people have no symptoms and are spreading it without knowing. So it's critical we stay home. 
Don't meet anyone outside your household or support bubble except for exercise. Only go out if it's essential. Stop the spread. Stick to the rules. If you bend the rules, people will die. Stay home. Protect the NHS. Save lives. They said they don't make it tough in the city, yeah. On empty streets beneath the stars, Rock City, yeah. It's always been this way. Musicians searching for somewhere to play in the city. Rock City, yeah. In the city. Rock City, yeah. Must be a jukebox in every bar Had a radio playing in every car Jukebox rumble, the beat goes on In the city, yeah One long party, one long song Rock City, yeah And as the sun goes down The music's coming up from underground in the city, rock city, yeah. In the city, rock city, yeah. It's easy to find you're already there. Rock city is everywhere. In the city, yeah On empty streets beneath the stars Rock City, yeah And as the sun goes down The music's coming up from underground In the city, Rock City, yeah In the city, Rock City, yeah. In the city, Rock City, Rock City, yeah. In the city, Rock City, Rock City, yeah. It's easy to find, you're already there. Rock City is everywhere. That was Rock City by The Ilk, and before that we had Off Party. You're listening to The Arch on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain. Uh, Rock City is a song by Twanglin' Jack Ford, who is our album reviewer. And we're going to go straight over to Twanglin' Jack now to hear this week's album review. Neil Young, After the Gold Rush. Now, I, I like the grungy Neil Young songs with the distorted guitars and the almost aimless solos and the whining about politics and stuff and I could have quite easily chosen the album that comes before this everyone knows this is nowhere which is 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 much more grungy than this much more rocky and most people would have chosen the album that comes after this which is Harvest which to me is a bit too country folky this is quite a rock album although there's only one real a powerful rock song on it which is Southern Man which uh, he has one of his traditional guitar solos in and it's quite biting about the politics of the South and it upset Leonard Skinnerd, made them wrote Sweet Home Alabama. It's also got Only Love Can Break Your Heart which is a magnificent song and to me it sums up the era that this album was made in because it came out about the same time as he was doing Crosby, Stills, Nash and & Young and it has that 
major seventh harmony on it, which a lot of people use when they're a singer-songwriter. I think you usually discover it when you go to play an F and you don't put your finger on the top string and you get an F major seventh. And uh, that's just, it, it is quintessential 1970s singer-songwriter. But the truly great song on this album, the thing that makes it stand out, not just from the rest of Neil Young's repertoire, but probably the whole of the rock canon, is the song After the Gold Rush. Curious that it's so popular. It's a guy with a very reedy tenor voice singing hippie nonsense with just a piano. It's got a lovely melody which anybody else would have probably be tempted to put strings and a choir on. But no, this is very pared down, it's very sparse, and it's very haunting. Uh, the other songs on the album are all really good as well, it's totally worth checking out. It's probably the Neil Young album that doesn't have any filler on it. Alright, thank you very much to Twangling Jack Ford for sharing Desensitised to the Nth Degree as part of the Rhylite Zone and for this week's album review as well, and for letting me play Rock City, even though I did play on that song, so I should be allowed anyway. Uh, thanks to Caitlin McAvoy for joining me, thank you to Off Party as well for letting me play their music. Just a few announcements before we uh, close off this week's show. So in event news, uh, we have, in fact, if you're listening to this now, you're probably not there, because we have a weekly Hatha Yoga session starting at Wickham Arts Centre with Humming Bee Yoga, and those are happening uh, every Tuesday, uh, every Tuesday evening, you can find all this information on uh, the Wickham Art Centre page, which is facebook.com forward slash Wickham Art Centre. On Friday night, uh, Friday the 11th, from 7.30 till 10.30pm, we have our monthly open mic night in the cafe space. I'm super excited about this because it'll actually be my birthday and I'll be hosting it and performing there as well. So do come along to that. And on Saturday, we have the launch of the Big Arts Market, which is part of Books Art Week. So over 30 local craftspeople, makers, etc., all displaying their work. And there'll be bits and bobs available for purchase as well. So that's from 10 p.m. 10 a.m. sorry till 6 p.m. at Wickham Art Centre on Saturday, and also on the same day on the Saturday we're launching our art gallery in the cafe space. We're going to have some music in the garden, including from previous guest uh, Franz Elul. Uh, Dave Cannings is going to be there playing some classical guitar, and uh, this is going to be from 1 p.m. on the Saturday. And at 2 p.m. the mayor is coming down to officially open the gallery, so do come along to that. The uh, arts market is going to be open as well, Saturdays, Sundays and Wednesdays, I believe. Again, all information on facebook.com forward slash Wickham Art Centre, so do check that out. And do come along, I'd love to uh, have a chat to you and see some of you in person. So as always, you've been listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain. Thank you very much for listening. I'll be back next Tuesday and I'm going to leave you with one last tune. So this is Jazz DeLorean with Rain on a Sunday. Let's hope it doesn't rain this Saturday for the music in the garden. I'll see you next week. Telling me to smile I won't waste a smile again Do you have the facts To make a lie Or the courage to remain There's nothing like rain on a Sunday Get you in a Monday sort of mood Alone and in the dark You got me on my knees Take me to a star
Wickham Sound.